Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Warcry for the channel. I bet you didn't think it'd be back so soon, but we have a new warband to try and it's a big, angry, hungry mob. So wanted to get them on the table ASAP just to see how they do because they're quite a fun looking and acting warband, which we'll go take a look at in a second. It is the Gorger Maw Pack versus Soulblight Gravelords. So it's a nighttime fight on the layout that you can see before you. So let's go talk about them. So these five hulking brutes split into dagger, hammer, and single one in shield are the Gorger Maw Pack as you get them in the box if you buy them. It comes to 995 out of the 1,000 points you're allowed. And the two special ones are at the front. So we have ourselves the Clawback here. He is the toughest of the bunch, although they are all strong. They all have a minimum of 30 wounds. He has 35. They're only toughness 3. I guess that's to show that they're quite easy to hit because they're so large, but they hit like trucks. He hits at 3 slit, three slash 6. Um, the bog standard ones vary, but it's usually a minimum of 3 or 4 for a normal wound, up to 8 for a crit. So they really are just blunt force to the face. Anyway, to carry on going on the list, this is the Cave Howler, and then at the back are just 3 bog standard Gorgers with different setups. We have Gorger, Gorger with Great Club, and Gorger with Club. So as I say, those two in the dagger, those two in the hammer, and them in the shield. And they just like eating and eating and killing. What more can you say, really? They're at numbers disadvantage. It's two enemies to every one of them. But, as I say, you've got to get through a lot of wounds to even take down one of them. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, one last thing to mention. A lot of them, by default, have the beast rune marks. They can't hold objectives. You can also temporarily make them lose that with some of their doubles, triples, quads. Uh, you can also give some of them the beast rune mark, although I believe the only one who doesn't have it is the yeah, is the the big boss, the clawback. But there is one that he can do that gives him that mark for what I don't know why you would want to really, but you can do that. And here are the Soulblight Gravelords, a uh, different version of a list that has been on the channel before. Split into a group of three for dagger, four for hammer. 3 for shield as you see them from left to right. So we have a vampire lord, a kursagi night guard and a dead walker zombie in the sword. In the shield we have a necromancer, another kursagi night guard and two zombies and then in the final part we have a Vircos bloodborne and two more zombies. So zombie heavy list, that's why there's so many of them. 10 miniatures playing 5, those zombies are going to get eaten. But depending on what kind of a mission we're rolling, having more bodies on the field might actually prove super advantageous. Because all it takes is one little zombie to get someone stuck in combat, so they have to do a disengage action. On that note, I'm going to randomise the mission and deployment, and then we'll be back with that. So here's what we've randomised. We've seen under lock and key before as our victory condition, but we've got it again. I'll go over it in a second. And we've got stark beginning. I'm going to bring it up to the camera because it's a bit reflective there. As the deployment type. So only the shields are on the table to start with. That's not good for the Gorgers because <laughs> the shield is their weakest group of only a single bog standard Gorger with no weapons. So they're a bit mismatched against, what was it, a Virko's Bloodborne and two zombies. So we'll see how that goes. Round two, the daggers come in on opposite ends, left and right, and then round three, the hammers come in back, kind of backing up the shields there. So that's how it's going to be. I forgot to mention, uh, Gorger Mopak won the roll-off, opted to be attackers. It seemed more thematically apt for them to be attacking something anyway. It's kind of what they do. And that matters for this. So after deployment has happened, adhering to start beginnings, the attacker picks one friendly fighter on the battlefield, so it's going to be one of those three that I just mentioned, to be carrying the key. The key is classed as treasure. Then the defender picks one terrain piece that has to be the vault door, the battle ends after four rounds. When the battle ends, if an attacking fighter is carrying the treasure, and keep in mind again, I think only one of them can carry it unless you use a triple, is within one inch of the vault door, the attacker wins, otherwise the defenders win. So, we shall see how that goes. Um, as a reminder though, if you want to see more Warcry on the channel, please do remember to support it. You can do that in free ways just by liking, commenting, subscribing. Or if you want to become a channel member, this is one of the series that comes out early to channel members by about a week. And it just helps keep the lights on at the channel. You can also check out the channel sponsor via the affiliate link below. And on that note, while I get this deployed and we work out who's got the key, etc. Enjoy this quick word from my channel sponsor. 
This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And with that said, we're back with deployment done and it's pretty quick for the Gorger mob pack because they've just got their single Gorger on the table there. Just scouting out ahead, I guess. And at the far end of the table, six inches back from the center line, we have the Veracruz Bloodborne and the two Deadwalker zombies. So then it came down to picking who would be holding the key and it's the zombie that you can't quite see that's just tucked in under here to the well camera left of the Bloodborne there. Picked a zombie because they're slow. The gorgers can catch up with them. The, the gorgers move five inches. I think the zombies are three inches. So there's a chance there of actually catching them. Because Bloodborne is too quick. But then the defender gets to pick what the vault is. And that was a difficult decision because of where the reinforcements are coming on. The upper right corner of the table is actually the best defensive position for the vampires because they've got a group there and one of their groups of, defense, of reinforcements are coming in on the right there meaning that they'll have the most bodies over there. Uh, it just says you have to pick a terrain feature to be the vault door. It doesn't say it has to be on the ground. It doesn't say, you know, whatever. So the broken corner of the church up there, I guess there's a trap door somewhere because that has been selected as where the vault is. Now, that means any part of it counts, which in itself is a downside because the gorgers just with the key, if they get it, just needs to get within an inch of any part of that but it's so tucked away up there that it's going to be annoying. So I think that covers everything. It's going to be a real quick round one because of uh, just the lack of activations on the table. But let's go to the dice. So here's how the dice shook out. The Gorgers rolled a double two and that was it, but they've used their wild die to make a single six into a double, giving them three singles there. But the vampires, well, they rolled a three uh, three sets of doubles, double two, double one, double six. So they are banking their wild die for this turn and accepting that obviously they aren't going first because they have no double, uh, no singles at all, really. So it's into round one with the single gorge on the table apparently going first. So as the game gets started, I'm immediately having to do a little correction because I forgot each fighter can only use one dice ability per activation. So there was no point at all using that wild die to make a double six when they already had a double to use. So we're retconning that, that the wild die was not used. It doesn't change who has activation, doesn't change anything. It's just, I totally forgot fighters can only use one ability. He was going to use rush and then what he actually did, which would have got him into combat one move sooner and there would have been some fighting. Totally forgot though, so we're having to do it this way. The Gorger activated, moved his five inches from where he started, then he spent his double on bounding leap. Uh, which act, all Gorger Mob Pack have access to because you just need their rune mark. You pick a visible enemy fighter within six and then you make a bo bonus move action that must finish closer to that visible enemy. So he finished basically half an inch to an inch outside of engagement range from the zombie and then used his other actual action to just do another move and get into combat. He actually is touching the bases of both the Deadwalker zombie and the Veracruz Bloodborne. The one with the key, however, is not in combat and is safe behind them but he is right in their faces straight away. The Deadwalker zombie with the key was the first to activate. The double one was spent on Rush to give him four inches of movement per movement action instead of three. So he moved a total of eight to where you can see him. Now that is dangerous because it's putting him near the large bit of terrain that is classed as where the key needs to be taken, but it's away from the only enemy on the table currently. Reinforcements are gonna come in like right here next round and I guess the plan is to kind of just skirt him down the side, but we'll see how it goes for him. The Deadwalker Zombie locked in combat decided he just gonna swing at the giant gorger. They get two attacks strength three, which isn't entirely great. They've got good crit on it, but just one damage on a normal hit. First set of attacks, strength three versus toughness three, one bog standard wound for one damage, and then he repeated the feat with the second action for a total of two wounds, so not even quite 10% of the wounds of the Gorger. And already the final activation for the first round of for the Veracruz Bloodborne just stayed in combat as well. It ties up the Gorger in combat, so why not? He's a bit stronger than a bog standard zombie as well. He gets four attacks at strength four, and he did that across two, and the total number of successes across both attacks was a single crit and a single hit. So not super great. They're capable of putting out a lot more damage. Their crits do five, 
But in total, that is six more wounds, so the Gorger's up to eight of his 30. And that is the end of the round. There is no victory points to co collate because it's just down to whether or not the Gorgers can get the key and take it to where the lock is. As we go into round two, however, the daggers are coming on on both flanks, roughly in the middle. So the Gorgers are coming in middle of the table to the left of your camera and the vampire dagger is coming in on the middle of your right. So we'll show you where those are after handling the dice. So round two, here we have the dice. The Gorger Mop Pack rolled a triple and they've used both their wild dice. They had the one left over after the correction in round one to make a double six and a double four. They want to use a bunch of rushes and or bounding leaps. Left them with a single two. The vampires rolled a triple three and a double four. They've used one of their two wild dice to turn a single three into a double and they're banking that wild die right there. So it came down to a roll off. I think wild dice count in that capacity as a spare leftover single if it doesn't, apologies. Still rolled off though, and the Gorger Mop Pack is going first. And unfortunately for them, the scenery is working against them, but here's where the reinforcements for the Gorger Mop Pack came in, the Clawback and the Gorger with Club. Then if we pan all the way to the other side of the table, the Vampire Lord, the other Corsagi Night Guard, and one more zombie have popped in right there. So the Gorger that started on the table was the first activate because he's probably going to be a bit of a punching bag for everyone that just came on, so better to go with him early. He, as his first attack action, struck into the Deadwalker zombie who, as a reaction, used Unfeeling Flesh, was it called? Uh, it just means basic hits do one less damage to a minimum of one. Crits remain unchanged. And he rolled hot against that zombie. He rolled three normal hits and a crit, so even with the minus, that was still a total of 11 wounds to a 10 wound model, so that zombie is out of there. But especially with the Necromancer present. Uh, oh, actually, is the Necromancer on the table yet? No, he's not. Well, eventually some of the zombies can come back, but not yet. So then his other action was just to strike into the Vircos Bloodborne. He didn't do as well against him, despite having the strength advantage in the attack. Got two normal hits through for six wounds of the Vircos Bloodborne's 15. So, not too bad, I guess. Surprisingly, first up for the Vampires was the Vampire Lord, who spent their double three, was it? Their lower double on Rush to get a total of 6 inches per movement and he did 2 of them to move a total of 12 and he's just going to be a roadblock I'm guessing he, he is moving towards the centre of the map he just needs to form a defensive line and he is powerful he's toughness 5 and he gets 4 attacks of strength 4 with crits doing 6 so he is kind of on par with the strength of a gorger uh, so he might be a big enough roadblock to slow them down and slowing them down is ne really all they require the other reinforcements for the Gorgers are coming in right here-ish. So as long as there's bodies in the way, it's going to be real hard for them to get to that zombie with the key. It was pretty much a snap activation for the Gorger Mopak as their clawback activated. That's the leader, that's the one who can normally just pick up the key. He's still got enough of his brain left. He spent their double four on rush, so he could also move six inches per move. He is pretty fast. And moved also to roughly the middle of the map, not quite as far as he would have liked, but the scenery over here was kind of in the way, so he had to poke around the corner first before coming over. And he's trying to kind of slip by the Vampire Lord. It'll all depend on who activates first next round, because he needs to get past. That's the problem. It's a shame, because I really wanted to see what he could do to the, the Vampire Lord, because he's just so scary. 35 wounds. He does 6 on a crit with 4 attacks at strength 5. Uh, sorry, yeah, 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 it is strength 5, so that means he can potentially put out 24 wounds in a single attack. He'd have to roll all crits, of course, which is super unlikely, but that's still scary. Next up for the Soulblight Gravelords was the Kursagi Night Guard, who just moved twice, they only moved 4 inches, so a total of 8 inches. Got him into an advantageous position, because that's blocking another potential line to get to the zombie that's just... I I'm choosing to believe the zombie with the key is just walking around randomly. <laughs> And the Gorger with the club activated for the Gorger Mop Pack, using their double six for Rush also, giving them six inches of movement per move action. He was even further back behind the scenery, annoyingly. So after the two moves, he's not quite as far forward as the clawback, but he is just trying to get over the side of the table that matters. There is going to be some dice rolled this round, as it turns out. The Viracos Bloodborne activated, attacked into the Gorger he is locked in combat with. And I kid you not, his first attack roll, four dice at strength four versus toughness three, was all twos. All four dice were twos, so nothing. 
Did better with the second set though, got two normal hits and a crit through with that for a total of seven wounds. But rather than put that down, we're just going to take that three and change it to a ten, because with the seven added on, that's added up. So that means the Gorger has now lost half his wounds, as he's still got 15 left. I like how just meaty and tanky they are. Like he is taking a beating and he's still kicking. So all that's left at the end of round two is just two dead walker zombies, one of which had the key. So we're just going to cover where they ended up as one move because they did just double move each. The one that came in with the vampire lord is kind of blocking down here. The one with the key, who used their double four for rush, just to have enough movement to play with, giving them four inches per move instead of three, is just hiding right there next to where the key needs to go to be fair, but there's a lot of bodies in the way. So that does take us to the end of round two. And again, at the end of round two, there is no points to collate. All that matters is going to the dice for round three, but now the final reinforcements for both sides are coming on, the hammers are coming on, and it's a center line down the map with the um, vampires coming in at the tippy top up there, and the gorgers coming in down roughly exactly there within three inches. So I'll show you where those are after we get the dice sorted out. After some umming and ahhing, here's how the dice shook out at the top of round three. Gorger Maw Pack, double three, double two. They used a wild die to turn a single six into a double six and had a four left over. Vampires rolled a double, uh, sorry, a triple one rather, and then they used one wild die to turn a double six into a triple six and their other wild die to turn a single four into a double four. They're quite happy not to go first this round because they have all routes blocked. So combat has to happen, so it doesn't really matter. So on that note, uh, let's go show you where the reinforcements came on. The Cave Howler and the Gorger with the Great Club have come in right there. And then it was a bit difficult to fit in the vampires with the corner up there because that building does go all the way to ex the exact edge where they were coming in. But the Necromancer, the other Corsagi Night Guard, and two more Deadwalker Zombies who are tucked in really tightly in there. That is where they have come on. So now all... Well, actually, I was going to say all activations, but they've lost a zombie. So nine activations on the table for the vampires against the five for the Gorger Mop Pack. So the penultimate round got started with the Clawback activating for the Gorger Mop Pack. They moved five inches, spent their double two on Bounding Leap to charge and do a free movement action, essentially, up to five inches at a target within six. So the Clawback used that to get right into combat with the Kursagi Night Guard blocking that pass pathway there. And then for his other actual action, struck at him. Four attacks at strength five versus toughness four. He got two normal hits through and a crit for a total of 12 wounds, which is really good. But Kursagi Night Guard, they're pretty tanky. They are also 30 wound models. So it's gonna be hard to chip away at that, but he got a good start. The Vampire Lord was first up for the Soulblight Grave Lords, spending their double four on Rush so that one movement action got him into combat with the Gorger armed with a club. Swung at him for his other action, four attack strength four versus toughness three. Managed to get two bog standard hits through for a total of just four wounds. But the more important part here is trying to lock him in combat. The Cave Howler activated, spending their double three on Bounding Leap, but that was after a movement action. So movement action, Bounding Leap, in the combat with the zombie right here, the Cave Heller gets 5 attacks at strength 4 with 3 damage on a normal hit, 6 on a crit. Unfortunately, of the uh, 5 attacks, did I say 5 attacks? 5 attacks at strength 4. Unfortunately, of those 5 attacks, there was 3 1s and 1 2, which is pretty appalling and potentially game ruining. <laughs> so only one normal hit got through for 3 damage of the zombie's 10 wounds. Definitely could have been better and that could actually cost them because that was really needing to be a kill there. The new on the table Corsagi Night Guard that came on with the Necromancer was off the table activated. One four inch move was not enough to get into combat. So he just double moved and is further locking down that Gorger up there. Can't do anything else with his turn though. Well we've seen this song and dance a few times. Here it is again. The Gorger with the Great Club that was down there activated. He did a move. He spent their double six on Bounding Leap and ended up in combat with that zombie that the Cave Howler went after. The one with the Great Club's a bit different. He only gets two attacks, but they're at strength six, and they do four damage base and eight on a crit. Unfortunately, he rolled a one, and he, he got a normal hit on the other one, though, 
So four more wounds through to the zombie, that's seven of his ten. Again, that really needed to be a kill. The Necromancer activated for the Soul Blood Grave Lords and just needs to body block, really. There, he does have a ranged attack, but everyone around him is locked in combat. So he just did two four inch moves approximately and has ended up there so that if the Corsagi Night Guard does fall, the clawback is going to have a problem of trying to get around him without getting locked in combat as well. Which is making this seem hopeless unless the Cave Howler and the Great Club using Gorger do better in the final round. The Gorger that's been on the table since the start activated, he first attacked into the Vercos Bloodborne, managed to get two hits and a crit through for, I think that was 11, was it? That was, uh, yeah, 11 wounds on top of the six he already had. They are out of there. So that is another casualty, if nothing else. Then they struck into the, uh, the Night Guard and only managed two normal hits for six wounds of his 30. So... That's what he's doing for the rest of the game, I guess, because like doing a disengage wouldn't have op opened up any other options that I can tell. So he's just going to try and get through that wall of meat. Well, cut off one head and another slower, smellier one will take its place. One of the dead walker zombies walked around and then engaged in combat with the gorger just to keep him there. To, they can't do anything else, can't attack. But you can just about make them out, right? The gorgers are so large and the zombies are so small, it's hard to see them. But that's where he ended up. He's also in combat with it now. So all that was left for the gorgers this turn was the gorger with the club. Not the great club, who only gets two attacks. The club gets three at strength five, going into the toughness five of the vampire lord. He did really well. Uh, across a total of two attacks, so six dice rolled in total, uh, doing three damage on normal hits, six on a crit. He managed to do five, six, eight. he did 18 wounds in total to the Vampire Lord with two normal hits and a crit on the second, a uh, lot of swings. So that's the kind of power they can put out if they actually land their hits. And that is 18 of the 25 wounds the Vampire Lord has. So he's not as sturdy against them as Toughness 5, 25 wounds would have you believe. But that's him done for the round now. So there's just a bunch of zombies to go, I believe. There is one dead walker zombie that's actually going to be attacking, but we'll cover the two that didn't just real quick. The other one that spawned up here, he's just moving there to help wherever he's needed on the final turn. The one with the key is just hiding right next to where the key needs to be, which is just so insulting. But he's moved up behind his army. It's I, I don't think they're going to get to him in one turn and kill him and grab the key, but I don't know, stranger things have happened. Final activation of the penultimate round was this plucky little zombie down here who swung... Two attacks at strength three twice into the cave howler and got one normal hit through, all said and done, for a single wound of the cave howler's 30. Good job, zombie. I hope you die next round. And there's a look at the board state at the end of the penultimate round. As I say, I don't think it's going to be possible for the Gorger mob pack to win, but if nothing else, they can hopefully just break and eat a few more bones as we go into the fourth and final round. And for the final round, here is what happened with the dice. The Gorger Maw Pack have rolled a quad five. They used their final wild die to turn a single four into a double, leaving them with one single. Vampires rolled a double one, double six. Oh, so sorry, a single six, which they used their last wild die to turn into a double, meaning that they had three singles. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but they have priority. So let's see how this ends. Well, it's not exactly a bombastic activation, but the Deadwalker zombie that was there moved over to there just to further block that passage and protect the zombie that's holding the key it makes sense it's to try and make sure that no plays will get through to him and it's probably accurate but we'll still play it the round regardless see if any more of the zombies or vampires can die well this unfortunately should have happened last round the gorger with the great club swung into that zombie that had seven wounds already only got one win through but his base damage is three it should have done a reaction but chose not to or forgot and so it is dead. He then just did a five inch move to where you can see him at the top there. The Vampire Lord activated and swung his spirit possessed blades into the Gorger that managed to wound him so severely twice. Did really well. Total of three normal hits, two crits through across the two attacks. Four attacks, strength four in each. For a total of 18 wounds, putting him at 21 of his 30 gone. So he's lasted till the end of the game. So this was the Hail Mary play by the Gorger Maw Pack to try and win and it came, da came down to the Cave Heller who you'll notice is all the way up there now. How did that happen? Oh, sorry, she should take her one wound with her. There we go. Did a movement action, did another movement action 
ended up there. That's 10 inches. Stuck in combat, obviously, because moved within an inch of the Necromancer and the Dead Walker Zombie. Spent their quad five on Starving Rampage, which any of them can do. They just need the, the rune mark for the Gorge of Mopak. Until the end of the battle round, this fighter is considered to have the Beast rune mark, which she had anyway, I think. Yeah. If this fighter is carrying treasure, you would drop it. And this fighter can make one bonus melee attack action for each visible enemy fighter within one inch of them. Each of these attacks must be at a different fighter. So basically... It's wordy, but she just gets a free attack against every person within an inch of her. So she struck into the zombie, did 12 wounds, it has 10, splied it. Goodbye zombie. Hit into the necromancer, also did 12 wounds, but he's got 20, so he took the hit and lived. Couldn't get within an inch of the zombie with the key. Uh, you know, off camera, I'm just going to quickly roll. If he'd hit that zombie, you would be on threes, that would be three normal hits. That would be... Oh, that's even worse. Okay, if that dice roll had counted, say she had been able to get within an inch of the one with the key, it would have done nine of its ten wounds. That would have been worse. Yeah, that would have been worse than not being able to get to it. Living on one wound would have hurt so bad. So, never mind. That was the best shot. It's not going to be a win for the Gorgers today. But I'll consider it a Pyrrhic victory if all of them live at the end of the game. And I don't think they're in any danger of dying. So we're looking at the battlefield there, just deciding who even has a chance of dying. The Gorger that started on the table is really the only one at risk, and the Krasagi Night Guards are so tanky there's not really a chance of them dying, but the one that is engaged with that Gorger attacked twice and managed to do 8 more wounds to him, taking him to 23 missing. That means there's a chance that the zombie locked in combat with him, it's an outside chance, but there is a chance, will actually kill him, so we're still going to play on a little bit. He's going to activate next to try and kill that zombie to stop it happening, and we'll see. Should have just kept the camera rolling, really, because it was just rolling four dice twice. Um, a total of four normal hits got through, which is 12 wounds. So that zombie did indeed die, and now no one is really in any danger. The clawback hitting into that Corsagi night guard over there, I don't think he's going to do enough to kill it. It certainly can't kill him. He's got 35 wounds, even if it did max damage. It'd be doing, what, 20 if it did if it maxed itself out. But the clawback, four tanks at strength five. Uh, yeah, strength five. I guess it's possible. Let's roll that out real quick, just to end the game on, because there's nothing else to be done, really. Can that clawback just max out? Because that night guard is already wounded. He's got 12 wounds gone, so he's got 18 left. So this is five... Sorry, four attacks at strength five twice. So it's on threes. Let's just roll it live and see. So first attack is, oh, two crits and a normal hit. I'll just use other dice. Again, four at strength five. So that's three normal hits through there. So actually, I think he killed him, right? It's, how much is it for a crit? It's six on a crit. So the crit alone is 12. And then it's 3 on all the standard ones, so it's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He did 24. That's what I'm talking about. So that's 24 on top of already having 12. That night guard got splatted, just as one last slap in the face. There is other activations to have, yes, but there, there is no way to change the outcome at this point. It does mean, though, that all the gorgers survived, which is quite impressive considering the beating that the one who started alone on the table had. But we can talk about that in the post game. So it is a win for the Soul Blight Grave Lords, we're not disputing that at all, but I'm claiming a small victory with the Gorger Mopak all surviving. They are beasts, literally and metaphorically. And the thing that kind of screwed them is one, being the attacker in an objective type where they kind of need to pick up something where only one of them can unless you use a triple called, sorry, a double called Glimmer of Consciousness and only lasts for the round. But the true thing that I think screwed them was stark beginnings. Not having enough bodies on the table. Now obviously that's just bad luck that it was the shields that started and that was the one group that had a single model in it. So there was kind of bad luck compounding on top of bad luck there for them that kind of screwed them. Their final kill count, by the way, was four dead walker zombies, the Virgo's Bloodborne and one of the Krasagi Night Guards. So they did pretty well in terms of murdering. I think the had the deployment time been different, even with lock and key being the objective condition, they still could have done it. They are very scary, they are very powerful. 
and yeah, I think that's what cost them the game. I'm very fun to play as though, they're just, they're very intimidating, they're just so powerful. Like, none of them do less than 3 damage on a normal hit, and because they're all hitting at, at least strength 4, most of them at strength 5 or 6, in the case of the clawback and the one using the great club, respectively, you're only looking for 3s most of the time, if you're not hitting something like a vampire lord. So, yeah, they are capable of putting out a lot of damage. Their downside is obviously only having 5 miniatures in total, but, hey, that's not many more, or many less, rather, than your average Stormcast list, so... Either way, I hope you enjoyed their first showing on the table. We'll probably try and get them on the table again next time. I want to try them in a different um, victory condition. But they did lose today. The Vampires win. As I said at the top of the video, though, if you do enjoy Warcry on the channel, please do remember to show your support. You can do that in free ways, like liking or commenting. Or, if you're willing to go that extra step, you can become a channel member. You get access to certain videos early, including the Warcry videos. Or check out the channel sponsor, they carry Games Workshop products along with every other board game and miniature game I cover. If you buy anything via the affiliate link, I get compensated, so we both get something out of you making a purchase. Thank you either way though, hope you enjoyed, see you next time, ta-ta for now.